Hi, my name is Ji Young Lee, and I'm the author of this um, paper. And I'm here to present our paper called Digital Equality Through the Lens of Self Disclosure. Uh, we are all from Penn State, and I want to say thank you for uh, my advisors, Sarah Reitmeyer and Dr. Jimmy Wilson, and also my undergrad student, um, Isha. So, for the table of content, I'm going to talk about um, some brief introduction of our paper and um, present three research questions we have um, came up with for the study and um, dig into the methodology and statistical analysis of our study and conclude this presentation with additional findings. Uh, so as a part of introduction, privacy related issues such as uh, privacy paradox and digital inequality st still remains as serious problems. Just in case you're not really sure what these two terms are, um, privacy paradox refers to users um, a contradicting privacy attitude and their actual behavior. So for instance, if user says they're worried about their privacy threats, but they actually disclose more than they usually do, um, and uh, this problem can really lead to uh, huge privacy threats to uh, the users because they're not really certain what they're doing despite their worries. And speaking of the digital inequality, um, it refers to the disparities in knowledge and ability of using digital technologies among individuals. So for instance, those who have more resources such as those who have higher income or higher um, education level tend to have less difficulties in managing their privacy settings Meanwhile, those who belong to low SES um, users um, have trouble understanding what the privacy settings are to adequately protect their personal information, even if they are aware of the potential privacy threats. And this has been highlighted in the previous literature that has inspired us to look into this kind of problems. Um, not surprisingly, groups of people from different cultural and religious backgrounds possess unique privacy habits, beliefs, or concerns, but we believe it is very critical to bridge um, that differences, that gap, that kind of block some other users from protecting um, themselves from uh, the potential privacy harms. Um, hence, we proposed three different research questions um, to identify the relationship between social demographic factors of Twitter users and their online privacy behaviors. So the first research question is about do demographics and SES has an impact on the usage of login verification? And the second research question is whether do demographic and SES has an impact on the user's self-disclosing behaviors? And last but not least, do users' self-disclosure topics vary across demographics and SES? So now we're going to talk about the methodology of our study. Um, to start with the methodology, we had to recruit our study participants via Twitter ad targeting services. Um, Twitter ad targeting services is very useful if you want to target specific groups of audiences for your tweet um, advertisement. So they have different settings, for instance, like raising their awareness or, or like raising the uh, engagement to your tweets. For instance, like clicking the link that has been included in your post or click the image that has been included in the post. So you can choose based on your needs. Um, yeah, so using that feature, we collected um, their Twitter handles in, um, in addition to demographic information, including gender, age, race and ethnicity, location, education level, and income information via the first part of our survey, which was included in um, the example of our post in the right hand side. Um, among 1,200 participants, 125 users were determined to be eligible to move forward given our hidden criteria. 
Um, speaking of the hidden criteria, the reason we impose these criteria is to make sure the users that are participating in our survey is actually an active Twitter users who could represent um, the overall population of Twitter. Uh, for instance, those people who didn't have their account for more than one month or who didn't post tweets, um, at least like 10 tweets in the last month were excluded in our survey because we decided um, those people are not eligible to represent um, the active Twitter users. Um, therefore, 110 um, users have completed all surveys with valid Twitter handles who met um, the hidden criteria as well. Secondly, we have to distribute our surveys, other parts of the surveys to include more information about the authors. Um, so for the entry survey, we mainly ask about their um, occupation information uh, because this is, we consider this information could be the key to determine um, the socioeconomic status of the users apart from the income level. Um, so we decided to separate these questions into the entry survey. And as a part of the exit survey, we wanted to see what kind of posts they have deleted during the study period and whether if they use login verification setting, which is more related to two-way authentication um, settings um, that are normally known in other um, websites. And also we asked if they recall sharing any of the followings, such as the personal information types to compare their recollection and their actual behaviors in the later part of the study. At the same time, we decided to collect their real-time tweets so that we could look into what they're actually posting apart from their self-reported um, answers. So participants' real-time tweets were collected at a single time point exactly one month after the entry survey completion and metadata for each tweet um, including um, profile description, hashtags, favorite counts, and retweet counts were also collected. In total, we had 21,068 public tweets, um, but we narrowed it down to 15,727 tweets for our analysis because these were actually posted by the users as they were non-retweets. Um, last but not least, we wanted to make sure what kind of content they were sharing in their post. So we manually an annotated um, the person information types for each post. So as I have mentioned earlier, we had more than 15,000 posts. And for us, it is impossible to label all of them without getting the help from like the, um, like the automated detection method. Um, hence, we just narrow it down to those posts that are original, uh, which is equivalent to non-retweets, and those tweets that contain the first-person pronouns, such as I, my, me, mine, um, us, ours, and so forth, um, which narrow it down to like 6,962 tweets in total, and we manually label them by going through each post um, deliberately. If one post contain more than one of the information, we consider that as like a multi-label. So uh, we just check all of the followings and those tweets that contain any of the, any of the categories were labeled as um, the post with no self-disclosing um, information. As a part of the statistical analysis um, to answer the research questions, we had, um, several independent variables, including income, gender, age, education level, race and ethnicity, and occupation, which were closely related to the user social demographic information. And for the dependent variables, um, all of them differ based on the research question. And for the first research question, the use of login verification setting, which could be answered either yes, no, or I don't know, were collected from um, the survey. And for the research question two, we, meant, uh, we calculated and quantified the amount of self-disclosure for each user by calculating the average percentage of self-disclosing tweets for each user um, based on the collected tweets. 
And lastly, for the research question three, it's pretty similar to the uh, research question two, but we did it for each um, personal information category and ran um, statistical analysis for each category. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to talk about the results of our analysis. So for the research question one, we performed a chi-square test and logistic regression and results indicated that none of the, none of the social demographic variable was associated with the use of login verification setting, which was pretty interesting because pre previous findings have mentioned that um, gender or age um, differences were uh, witnessed but in our case, we did not witness any of those differences. However, for the research question two, we performed linear regression model. We found that gender and education variables were identified as statistically significant predictors, meaning participants who are men were less associated with online self-disclosure by 11.5% than female participants. And those who are in um, a college diploma were 14.4% percent less likely to share their personal information online compared to those with less than high school diploma or equivalent. The overall findings suggested that um, those who belong to um, low social demographic groups tend to disclose more. However, it cannot be just uh, guarantee for all of the other social demographic variables, we only found the differences in gender and education level. And for research question three, we ran um, different types of one-way ANOVA for each personal information category. And we found that self-disclosing behavior with respect to birthday and age or education and opinion categories differ within the gender groups. If you want to check out how different they are, you could go back to the paper. Um, we're gonna have more detail in the paper, but due to time limitation, I didn't include it in the slide. Um, and for the second finding, disclosures of birthday and age were um, significantly correlated with the level of education. And for the third finding in terms of ethnic group, um, disclosure of gender information differs significantly. And for the last finding, this, um, differences in rate and the city gender and location categories within different occupations were um, significant as well. Again, if you have more questions about this um, detailed um, description of this research question, um, you can visit me in the poster section. And our additional findings were pretty interesting too because this was something different from our research questions and these findings have illustrated that people actually didn't share that much compared to their recollection. So as you can see for specific categories such as race and ethnicity and state information, city information, hobbies, TV programs and leisure activities, uh, we found that people actually thought they have disclosed more but they didn't really disclose um, in their tweets which was very interesting. This sort of highlights that people don't really remember what they're sharing online, uh, which can lead to a really serious privacy threat in the future. Um, maybe this finding is related to one of our limitations that we only annotated those tweets with first person pronouns. So yeah, this result can be misleading, but as you can see, we could witness like the hugest um, disparities based on their recollection and their actual behaviors, which also highlight um, people have trouble remembering what they're sharing. And then we also compare the privacy behavior and um, their privacy concerns. Um, the self-reported use of login and verification settings among our study um, highlighted that more than 57% of people have answered no or I don't know which is also very interesting. Um, yeah, so even if majority of people said they're worried about um, their account security, they don't really know what kind of setting they were using, in fact, because a lot of people have said they're not using it and they don't really know whether if they're using it. Um, so maybe alarming them about their settings could be very beneficial um, in the future work. 
Um, we also found no correlation between your self-disclosure and the use of login verification options, which sort of highlight um, highlight um, the privacy um, divide that I have um, demonstrated in the first part of the presentation. So as a part of the conclusion, uh, we want to point out that on the contrary to our expected results, their login verification usage does not differ. And not all social demographic predictors contribute to um, differences in self-disclosing behaviors. Only gender and education level did. Um, and also topics of discussion vary notably among social demographic groups. Um, and also as a part of the interesting findings, um, participants recollection of sharing does not match their actual behaviors, which really signals a huge uh, privacy harms. And um, based on our analysis, we've found that there's a need for future work that assists users with keeping track of what kind of information they are sharing online and what kind of privacy settings they have as their default. Because a lot of people have answer they don't really know what kind of things they're using and we also witnessed like a huge discrepancies of their recollection and their actual behaviors so this is all for the presentation um thank you for listening if you want to stay connected um please email me or find me um in linkedin thank you